And he had gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us to be here again. As I normally say, since last Sunday, there has been many left the face of this earth, but God had saw fit to leave us around for a while longer for that we ought to be thankful. Pray for the president. Yes. Pray for the governor. Yes. Just pray for all those who are in authority. Because I think Paul said in the 13th chapter of the book of uh, Romans, there ain't no power right. but of God. That's right. So we have to pray for everybody, regardless how rotten they are. We got to pray for everybody. God wants us to pray. Even if things no good, maybe your prayer might get to turn. Uh -huh. Don't underestimate God and don't underestimate prayer. That's right. If there be in the bills of this morning, we want you to know that you are an honored guest in the Maple Avenue Church of Christ, swing wide on those Kansas. That's right. I thought for the next hour and a half, yeah. since we ain't going home, <laughs> we got to focus on the program. <laughs> no, nah, I won't be that long. But I'll be about 45 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. You have had read in your hearing this morning the 12th chapter of the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh -huh. I'm missing with the 12th verse through the 22nd uh, mm -hmm. verse. And my old preacher in his lifetime, he used to say this all the time. Devil, stop teaching about the Church of Christ. Because the more you know about it, the more you appreciate it. <laughs> it is a shame to say that there are some members I didn't get up here to criticize, but I'm just going to say this. There are some members that's members of the Church of Christ don't know very little about it. So, I got a, if they say I got an umpteen mile of lessons going on the church, and every once in a while I pull one out of my, out of my hat and bring it down here preaching. So I thought this morning, I will use the church, the church, the one body. Now Paul uses the concept of a human body to teach how Christians should live and work together. Just as the part of the body function on the direction of the uh, brain, so Christians are to work together under the head of Christ. That's right. Of Christ still the head of the church. That's right. The command and the thought of Jesus Christ. So this, this is where we get our command and our thought of how the church of Christ should operate. Now man-made churches, they work on their thought of man because they are man-made found. I mean, they are man found. Right. Man can put out what he wanted there. That's right. But not this church. So my question is, what is the church? That is the question. The answer of legion, or if you will, is many. Churches vary from where structured are. Uh, churches vary from where structured, wealthy, high organized institution, underground sale group. With money, a structure, and everything in between. Uh -huh. What is the church? What is the biblical pattern for the church? And what is its biblical purpose? See, that's another thing. A lot of people just say, well, I just go to church, but you don't know nothing else about what you're supposed to do. Well, just come into church, that's good. But it's more than just come and sit in these pews. God expects you to do something. You know what I'm saying? It's, it is good to obey.
obey, uh, obey the gospel and come into the church. But once you get in that, well, I ain't got nothing else to do now. You better, you better change your mind about that. Oh, well, yeah. It's more than just sitting on them pews. There is work to do out there. Yes. And we do that, what, three times a month around here. So, you check yourself. What is the church? What is this biblical pattern and its purpose? How do we express the identity and full Christ desire in uh, creating it? All right. To begin, there are biblical metaphors which show what the church is. All right. Now, number one, you need to know what a metaphor is. Right. What I'm going to tell you, when, when I do this, and then you know what a metaphor is. <laughs> metaphors, which is what the church is, it is a family. That's a metaphor. <laughs> It is a bride. That's a bride, a, a metaphor. But most directly and specifically, it's the body. Right, sir. They call out. Yes, the church is the body of Christ. Right. All the other metaphors are the Old Testament, Old Testament equivalent, yeah. but this one does not. The body is the church. The New Testament identified. It has a, new, a unique position. Yeah, I've heard people say, well, he told them a lot in the church. Uh -huh. yeah. See, when we don't know, when the Bible said the church, we thinking about this building here. Uh -huh. Well, this is just the building where we need it. If you told a lie inside the building, then somebody said, well, you told a lie in the church. Yeah. Well, if you go outside that door or downtown, you the church, if you lied, you just lied in the church because you are the church. So we need to get that straight. We don't have to, we don't have to, we don't have to come to this building to have worship. We just stop in the middle of Nonsense and Palestra down there and have worship. The building is just where we come to have church. I mean, Paul said, uh, you know, in the Acts, he said, God don't dwell in bricks and marble. God dwells in us. So if we the church wherever you are, you do something wrong, you the church. So the church is not a physical building. It is a group of, a group of believers, not a denomination, sect, or associated, but a spiritual body. The church is not an organization, but a communion. A fellowship of one body, and it includes all the believers. Uh, now, somebody might say, well, well I, don't, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Uh -huh. God only has one family. Yes. Uh, and guess where that family at? It is in the church of Christ. Now, you can say, well, I mean, so and so church up here. We got a family. Yeah, just that. You ain't God's family, though. God only has one family. Yes, and that is the middle of the body of Christ. So, well. Paul refers to the physical body and says, in effect, you know that a physical body must be one. That's right. Now, your body is one. Everything on your body, your fingers, your eyes, your nose, your feet, and everything that makes up the body. Right. You cannot take your body and cut, cut it off, a leg, a head, and a couple of feet together in a heap and tell the body to go do something. Well, well, yeah. You can't say to those disconnected members, pull yourself together yeah. and function. Yeah. A body is a unit of members function together or it does not exist. That's right. See, in the body of Christ, when you got members pulling one way, the other members pulling the other way, it ain't gonna work. No. And guess what? God is not pleased when you do that. God is not pleased with, uh, he's not the author of confusion. So when you're in the church, if you ain't got nothing to do, don't criticize somebody else for trying to do something. <laughs> Let me tell you something else. Uh, Moses was one of God's greatest leaders. And those people rolled his back 
But when they, I want you to understand something. When they criticized Moses and the role of Moses by, and Moses was God's man. He was sent there by God. Yes, and guess what? When they were doing that, guess who they were? They were only uh, 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 against Moses. When you are against a God man and the God man is doing what he's supposed to do, you are against God too. Yes, I want you to know that. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. See, a lot of times we, you know, we don't know and we think. We think we're trying to be a uh, 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 smart, yes, but get your own self in trouble. Yes, yes, right. Right. Come on, preach up. Yes, 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 Looking at it from a different perspective, you can't cut off a hand all and on, but the head will maintain life. Now you cut one of my arms off, the head is still going. But now if you cut this off, okay. that's going to kill your body. That's yes, right. Yes, if you cut off the head, the life is gone. Yes, the same is true in the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Right. That sounds like a simple thought, perhaps. But some people think they are the head of their own church. Oh, right. See, that's how the denomination is. Yeah. The, uh, the, the denomination preaching, he builds his church. Right. He got his name up there. Right. Found him. Yeah. See, the church of Christ wasn't built by no man. Right. Christ died for this. That's, right. That's why we can put this name out there, the church of Christ. This is the true church of Christ. Now, anybody can put up church of Christ, but it ain't what goes on, it's what goes in. Yeah. That's right. All believers are wanting, receiving all the resources and strength, all wisdom, all instruction from the same head. In our text, yes, sir. the 12th and 13th verse, yes, sir. Paul tells us, I mean, he tells us how to enter the yes. church. Uh -huh. He said, for by one spirit yes. are you all baptized into that one body, whether you be Jews or Gentile, whether you be born or free, and have been all made to drink into that one spirit. Yes. Now, well, you tell me this. Mm. With all the foolishness that's going on on the radio and television and people are following this mess, they even say you don't have to be baptized no more. Well, Just accept Jesus. That ain't what the Bible says. No. Well, you have to accept Jesus. Don't get me wrong. But if he says you got to be baptized, you got to be baptized. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. You got to be baptized. Well, yes, sir. For by one spirit, are we all baptized into the one body? Whether we Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been made all the faith in that one spirit. Paul is trying to emphasize something here. In verse 12 and 13 of our text, Paul referred to the one body four times in two scriptures. Uh, Go back and check. That's a, yeah. Everybody in the electronic media across our nation would need to know. Uh, the Bible Church of Christ is a pearl and not a relic. The Bible Church of Christ. Now there are many. The Bible discouraged division. 1 Corinthians 1.10 And Jesus prayed for unity among his disciples. John 17 and 20 and what's so important about the Church of Christ? It wears the name of Christ. I cannot put a name on the church that Christ did not have. One personality that we can depend on for everything because he says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Some people might ask the question, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Right. It is this. God's Spirit places a believer into the body of Christ. Right. Verse 13 says, yeah. by one Spirit are we all baptized into that one body. That's right. right. A Christian comes into the body of Christ at the moment of his salvation being, being placed there by the energy of the Spirit. That's right. From the moment, from the moment he received Jesus, he was a part of that body. Yes, Not only was he put there by, but in verse 13 said, every Christian, all 
also had the same incredible spirit to drink and to assimilate and appropriate that spirit. When you obey the gospel, I got just as much to do with the spirit that you do. That's right. It ain't about it. It ain't with one spirit. That's right. And that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, you got some other spirit. Don't get me wrong. So the spirit regenerates all believers, place them into the body of Christ, and comes into a well in them in every crystal. Right. Romans 8 9 says, if yeah. See, I told you, I, I told you, if you don't have, I mean, uh, there's more than one spirit out there now. Yeah. Don't get mixed up. Yeah. Romans 8 and 9 says, any man, and that when it says any man, that don't mean just a man, that means a woman too. Yeah. Right. If that word is generic, become a man and woman, a boy and a girl, whoever don't know to God. Yes, it said, uh, if any man have not the spirit of God, he is not of him. Only way to get the spirit is to be obedient to the teaching of the Bible. That's, That's the only way you get it. That's the only way you get it. But you got you got these false teachers out here telling you uh God the witness when you see people in these congregations, they jumping around. Yeah, they got a spirit, but they ain't got God's spirit. That's right. That's right. There is no such thing as a believer who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Look out. Mm -mm. There may be somebody that say, well, I believe in Jesus and not a member of the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you might believe in Jesus, but you don't have his spirit because you are in somebody else's church. Yeah. You know, you can believe in something to do that make it right. Right. Let's look at something real quick. Uh, give, me, give me Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 7 and 8. I'm going to show you something. See, you might think that sometimes you believe in Jesus, but your action proves you don't. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew 15 and uh, 7 and 8 says, You hypocrites. You hypocrites. Well, then, he says, prophesies of you. Well, then he's not prophesying to you, yes. saying, this people draw nigh. They, they, they draw nigh with their lips, and that means draw near with their lips. Yes, but they're Read. hard. Unto me with their mouth. Unto me with their mouth. And honest me with their lips. And honest me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. There you go. Uh -oh. See, you got a lot of people. You got a lot of people calling on you. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just becomes something you do. Because Jesus said also in Matthew 7 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So you've got to be careful on that. Notice how the unity of the church is all wrapped up in the spirit. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 3. You should have it up there. Ephesians 4 and 3 real quick. What is it? Endeavoring. And you go, know, endeavoring to keep That's the so. unity of the spirit. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. We need to do what we can to keep the peace. Yes. You know, you know, you know a lot of times we say, oh, no, no, we can't do it. We just can't. Well, you got to try to do what God asked you to do. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? There are some scriptures in the Bible, like we were talking about what he had people last year. Yeah. As much as life, you have peace with all of me. All but right. you ain't going to have peace with everybody. But your responsibility is to try. Yes, when you try what God asked you to do and it don't work, yes, you get everything God asked you to do. We got that already. Yes, yeah. The church unity then is that is not based upon artificial organization and relationship. Not upon the fact that people are church going. Just because you go to church, that don't mean that you're in church. Some people go to church out of my tradition. I'm going because so and so going. I'm going because my mama's in law. Yeah, yeah. See, I, ain't, I can't even worry about what mama did. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I got my own soul to say. That's right. And you got people say, well, think about this. Well, that's what my mama did. Well, well your mama doing it right. I'm just worried about daddy did. Well, do what's he doing it right. That's right. Now, my mother and my father, they was Baptist. I went to Baptist. Yeah. yeah. But I found out over the years, they're going to a Baptist 
the church was pleasing in the sight of God. Now, am I going to stay in the church? No. Because I can't be saved. Right. All I only got one true church. And that is the church of Christ. Yes, sir. Come on. It is based that all believers have been identified in the work of a single spirit. He is the same in me as in the other Christian. That's right. I was regenerated by the spirit in the same way and placed into the same body by the same spirit in the same way. And it dwells by the same spirit in the same way all of us. Christians have been doubtful and we are in the one spirit. That's right. Ain't no two spirits of God. That's right. Amen. Given that all Christians have received the unity uh, on and in the body of Christ, still they have a tendency to pull apart and isolate themselves in small groups. Uh, uh, yeah, the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ has got no business having no different group. Having two churches in one church. All this shouldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? They scattered to clinch, join themselves to little groups of people who I can think the same way. It is possible for Christians to go to the same church, sit together, and even talk superficially, but at heart, still be far away from each other. Come on. They are tightly close too much. Uh, they are tightly close to most fellow believers, even though they might be open to just a few. To operate contrary to the way the body is supposed to function. And because of this, the whole body is hidden. Christians should relate to each other. Let me put it in another way. Getting the members back together into the experience of the whole body as God intended. We don't have no super saints. No, we don't. They don't exist. Reach out. They don't exist. See, see, when you're in the church, all of God's children is evil. That's right. That's why you are. Read that last. Read that last song, okay? verse 22. See, uh, in my text, uh, first chapter of uh, uh, first read, read that last one. See, when a person in the church that may be a slow runner, uh, whatever, then more, uh, we should put more reasons. Okay? Much more those members of the body, which seems to be more fee feeble, are necessary. So we should put more time with them. Yes, but now I'm not saying that we are all on the same level in learning. But when a person is a slow learner, you might take more time to explain that. That's the other one you should be sort of on that. But we won't do that though. So we don't have no super saints in the church. But see, some people might think they do. You know what I'm saying? Come on. To be totally committed to Jesus Christ and, and totally absorbed in the Spirit is not to be super. It is not no. There are no giants in, in the body of Christ. No one can come in here and say, "How did you get here?" He came by one Spirit into the body, just as everyone else did. That's the point of Christian unity. If if what put us into the body, we would all burst into pride. Yeah. See, so you ever know some people in the church, if they go out and they do something, no, they want the world to know. No. No. That's right. They want the world to know. But always remember that, whether I see it or not, and I ain't care whether I do see it, but what the whole thing I'm saying is, if you did it with the right motive, it's wrong as God. Come on, good job. I hear it all the time. Well, you know, I go out and I do this. Yes, you know, don't tell me about it. Well, you know, because that ain't gonna make you no bigger than nobody else in the church. Right. So you looking for you looking for uh uh uh, uh yeah, I'll pat on the back and come on, play work. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you do, do it with the 
the right motive and God will bless you. The Bible tells me, whatever you do, God see in secret and he will award you over. Amen. Come on, man. Right, that's Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it said we are trophies of grace, yeah. brought into the body through Christ. Christians have nothing personal to boast about. That's right. right. That's right. It is not about us anyway. It's about Christ. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. All right, watch this. As a preacher, I am no higher than anybody else. Neither am I lower than anybody else. Yes, right. The organization a chart of the Christianity is simple. Christ is the head Amen. of the body. That's right. There are levels of command. I want you to catch this. There are levels of command and authority. Yes, sir. Now, everybody can't be the head. Yes, sir. Everybody can't be the preacher. Yes, sir. Everybody can't be the song leader. Yes, everybody can't be the teacher. Yes, sir. But that still will give you no higher uh, priority over me. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And one thing I found out over the years, I've, I've, I've been seeing that for years. Well, a lot of people get a little thought that goes right to the heat. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! and get me up. First uh, Timothy 5, show me right quick. Let me, uh, let me break something down here for you. First Timothy 5, something he says what? Let the elders, let the elders that rule, that rule, will be counted for each other. Double up. Yeah. Every rule counts double up. Yes, sir. Especially they who labor in the word. And especially those who labor in the word. And doctrine. And doctrine. All right, hold on. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Labor in the word and doctrine means preaching, teaching, mm -hmm. these are yes, important sir. things. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.